Here is a 2024 Subaru Cross Track Premium in crystal white pearl over black premium cloth interior. We get a full refresh and you're seeing what the front is already looking like because they have tweaked everything from the exterior to the interior, giving it a little bit more response to that CVT transmission, making it more rugged, giving it a wilderness addition to increase the height for the first time on the cross track. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides and starting with standard steering response LED headlights, daytime runnings and LED fog lights because we're in the premium reworked headlamp assembly that goes into the tweak grille that will have a new pattern design. 8.7 inches of clearance, standard symmetrical all wheel drive with X drive mode that includes the hill descent and vehicle dynamic control so you're taken care of with dynamics keeping a standard four-wheel independent suspension and optioning the wilderness is going to be over nine inches of clearance so if you need to do some maneuvers you can do so with that standard 17 inch machine finish alloy wheels and you can upgrade to the limited with an 18 inch wheel enlarged front and rear brakes keeping the boxer 2.0 liter four cylinder that produces 152 horsepower and 147 pound feet of torque paired to a linear tronic cvt transmission achieving 27 mpgs for the city and 33 mpgs for the highway reworked raised roof rails that you can still put the tie downs and a shark fan antenna. I'm liking the exterior of the new cross track because it gives a tasteful approach compared to Toyota, Honda, and Mazda. And when you're looking at those comparable rivals, you're getting better MPGs, better suspension, standard all wheel drive system, which you're going to have to start paying extra for some of these amenities when you're going into Toyota and Honda. Rework C-structure LED tail lights and the whole back looks more boxy and a little bit more rugged. You need it to be a little bit more athletic, you go to the wilderness. Whether you option the 2.5 Boxer or this engine, all of them 1,500 pounds of towing, which in this area, I kind of wish that if you did go up the tier that you would get a little bit better towing and more storage for the roof rails similar to the Forester and the Outback but it's not going to happen with the cross track. Quick release going into 19.9 cubic feet of storage with a couple of beverage holders on the side, some bag holders underneath the floor it gets a spare tire. You'll still have to split fold the rear bench from the rear or if you're tall like me, you can do so in the back. 54.7 cubic feet will be a little bit less than the last gen. This is a 2.0. Let's go inside, start it up so you can hear that exhaust though. Premium cloth seats because we have option 14 that gives us 10-way power seat adjustments with heated front seats, manual adjustment for the passenger, adding that moonroof, blind spot monitoring, and rear cross traffic alerts. Headroom for the new cross track is good as well as leg space. The dashboard has been reconfigured, so no more two screen setup, meaning you get the informational thing and that screen here, you'll get dual seven inch multimedia or this 11.6 inch multimedia display. We have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming, Bluetooth audio. The limited, you can option navigation in the Harman Kardon. Reverse camera with full trajectory, xDrive with hill descent. Dual climate control is standard with six speakers because the premium trim, otherwise the base is four speakers. This area here has been refreshed also, so it's going to look a lot more clean than the prior gen, going into USB ports, a storage area for your cell phone, and the new key fob for the cross track. New design for the center cluster. I do like how they stagger this for the cup holders instead of having it the way they used to, and this would kind of edge out. This is gonna be pushed back, opens up, and it's a deep storage pocket. No more 12 volt here. It's gonna be right here with another storage area. Three spoke steering wheel, multi-function with adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, the paddle shifters, 4.2 TFT display that can go through an array of information for the driver so you don't have to worry about the informational center piece anymore. The eyesight has been pushed up so you can actually put your hands here and adjust the 
auto dimming rear view mirror and the door panels will basically be the same more or less it's going to be a little bit more firm but you'll have some soft materials one touch up and down for the front windows and a storage pocket that can fit a couple of beverages for the back seat headroom not an issue it is carved out so they do a good job in optimizing space leg space isn't bad either storage only behind the passenger seat because we're in the premium you get the usb ports and this center armrest with cup holders the base will not have it the door panel is going to be stripped of the materials that are found right in here it's going to be the same bit firm to rest with a couple of beverage holders or a flask the floor is not completely flat sliding over you will be sharing feet space but the rails are pushed up unlike the prior gen but in shoulder space is not necessarily bad considering the size of the vehicle. Headroom is still doable at six foot three. The refresh cross track. Unfortunately, the engine has not been refreshed. It's going to be a carryover. 152 horsepower, 145 pound-feet of torque out of the Boxer four cylinder and a 2.5 liter that will increase horsepower by 30 and increase torque by 33. I am liking the interior though, because the whole setup, it's a lot more user-friendly. Everything is now derived in the gauge cluster or the infotainment. It's not having three screens. It's just all over the place. I would say it would be nice to see that they didn't offer the dual seven inch multimedia display only because I prefer the 11.6, even though there can be some glitch here and there. Overall, it's a very easy functioning system. We're going to try to see some of the performance as soon as we set this up a little straight. Here we go. It's not going to be something that's going to the track. Don't expect that. Road noise will filter in. These are 17 inch wheels, so it's not necessarily too bad. You do sit up higher and it's more or less a box structure, which I like this a little bit more so because the prior gen was a little bit more oval in the sense that it just didn't look as rugged and off-road, especially if you option the wilderness edition. It will just make you feel like you need to go camping more and do some jeep trails because you can kind of do that with the cross track that's going to take me to my pros and cons and starting off with the interior the pro has to be that this center area here has been cleaned up the eyesight has been cleaned up so you can adjust the rear view mirror the center cluster has a little bit more functionality it would be nice to have a pass through because it's an suv and all suvs are doing this it feels wider in the interior the door panels are basically a carryover and for the back seat somebody that's over six foot tall can fit in this smaller suv some cons about the vehicle no real upgrade in performance the cvt trans transmission has been tweaked so it's a little bit better in the ratios but it's still a CVT transmission no increase in towing capacity or anything that you could put on top of those roof rails which I do like that you can add tie downs because they set up and it keeps that rugged look I also like the grill I think that they have done a good job changing the pattern and steering response LED headlights is standard on all trims that's not going to be the case when you go to Toyota, Honda, or even Mazda, which is more of a premium vehicle. It doesn't have as much vibrations in the interior either. They have tweaked that, which has also increased some weight by some of the components that they've added in minus to make it more of a smooth drive. Because it's an independent four wheel suspension, it just glides over everything, whether you're on or off pavement. It's going to be a little bit stiffer off road but I like the agility that comes with it if you do take the vehicle off-road because this is something that if you live up north and it snows, you can move around freely and you don't have to upgrade to a larger SUV. You can still get a small SUV and pretty much fit everything you need. Cargo has shrank a touch, but it's not really enough to be something that's really a big con. Standard dual climate control settings, which the prior gen was just a climate control, wireless apple carplay they have 
definitely increased a lot more of your day in use amenities, which the competition really needs to pay attention because Subaru, you're at around a $30,000 price point and you're getting all of this. And just to show you what I mean by the vibration has got a lot less. When we're at an idle, typically the camera that's pointed at my face would be rattling. Now it's staying smooth and flush. Turn radius, it's actually gonna be about a lane and a half. You're not gonna really see it here because I can't, we have a large media. Give her a little go. Here is where you may want to consider that 30 and 33 increase for horsepower and torque only for the motivation to get you up onto the interstate or passing people in between lanes. And it's a lot more simplified and cleaned up for that rugged look. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise website and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Subaru Lakeland for giving us this 2024 Subaru Crosstrack Premium for our car review.